Welcome back to Bean Energy. Just wanted to show a quick setup of using a high voltage solar panel like you would find uh, grid level installations or on a house. So this is a 400 watt panel connected to just a simple 12 volt battery setup with a charge controller. Now the big deal with using a high voltage panel is usually when you're in an RV or a little cabin setup, you just have your 12 volt batteries. And if you've got a 49 volt open circuit panel, how do you connect that? Because with a pulse width modulation controller, that's going to pull the voltage down to about 14 and a half from the 49 of this panel, and you're only going to get about a third to a fourth of the capacity of the panel because it's still going to be, you know, a 10 amp panel, but it's going to be at 14.5 volts. So the solution there is to get yourself an MPPT controller, which they are more expensive because when you can buy, you know, a $20 pulse width modulation controller, it costs you a hundred bucks for this. But this has some other features in it as well that I really like. This one's about a hundred bucks off of Amazon. I've got the link down in the description and I've got my solar running to it. You're running at 12 volts. This can take up to an 80 volt solar input. So that would probably, that would be one or two of these panels in series, but you could also run them in parallel. Um, and you have uh, uh, two positives and two negatives, so you could actually run the individual cables for two panels straight to the charge controller, and then it can handle up to 720 watts output into the battery. So really two panels of these is all you could really run at 60 amps. So this is a 60 amp charge controller. This charge controller can do lead acid, the sealed lead acid, flooded lead acid, AGM, it can do NICAD, which I thought was kind of weird, but okay. And it can do lithium ion. And that's the main reason that I went for this is because it could do the lithium ion and it's very flexible in what it can do. Now it's 60 amps. And the way they measure these is it's 60 amps out to the battery. So when you're running a 12 volt system, you could only run about 720 watts in. You could do 800, it'll just won't use it all, right? But if you're running a 48 volt system, because this can do 12, 24, 36, or 48 volt systems, whether that be lead acid, lithium, NICAD, whatever. If you're running a 48 volt system at 60 amps, you can get 2,800 watts worth of solar into your battery bank. And that's insane for a $100 controller. So I could have like, what, six of these panels is what would be logical for me. So four, six, big 2,400 watts worth of energy coming through this controller and off to a battery. But I digress, it's great for expandability. For this setup, it's relatively cheap at 100 bucks and that allows you to buy very inexpensive panels. So this panel can be had locally, you know, used or um, refurbished or whatever for 150 bucks or so. That's what I'm selling mine for is 145 bucks right now. So for $145, you get a 400 watt panel, which is insane. So that's plenty to run simple stuff, right? So we're running high voltage solar panel into our charge controller. From the charge controller, we have our wires running into the battery. Now you'll notice that I've got two wires here. These are 10 gauge wires. And the idea here is that you need your wires to be rated at a higher amperage than your fuse. I've got a 40 amp breaker on here to be able to handle one panel. Now these wires are rated at about 30 to 35 amps, depending on how long you have the wire. Because the longer the wire is, the more resistance there is and the less amperage there is that you can handle before it overheats and melts and causes a fire. And you don't want that. So anyway, I've got two of these that I can do up to what? That's rated at 60 to 70 amps or so. But I've got a 40 amp breaker because with one panel, if you take the 400 watt panel and divide it by 12 volts nominal on the battery, that's gonna be just under 40 amps. So I should never be pushing more than 40 amps, which means if I ever do, this circuit breaker trips and everything should stay safe. So I've got the double 10 gauge wire here again, connecting the two batteries to each other because these are six volt golf cart flooded lead acid batteries to make myself a 12 volt battery. I've got my negative with also my dual 10 gauge running up to that terminal, positive down to here. Now, one of the features of this charge controller, and I mean the, the cheaper ones have this too, is that you've got your DC output. Now this DC output is gonna be your battery voltage. It does not drop it down to 12 volts. So if you were running a 48 volt system, then this DC output here on the far right of the solar charge controller would be 48 volts or whatever the battery or the charge of your battery is at that moment. But in this case, we are a 12 volt system, which means I can have my 12 volt accessories wired in. I have here 
a five amp fuse. Now, why do I do a, why do I do a five amp fuse? Because this solar charge controller says that this is rated for five amps. And there is not a circuit breaker in here, as far as I know, they said it will burn if you try and do more than five amps. So you definitely want a five amp fuse here and pay attention to what you use um, for if you do a different solar charge controller, make sure that what you're doing is rated for that. Now, why do I do that if it's only rated for five amps? Now I could go straight to the battery instead of coming off of the solar charge controller. But the advantage of coming off the solar charge controller is that this solar charge controller is smart and it can turn off this output going to my phone charger or my space heater or what have you if the voltage of the batteries gets too low. So with lead acid, you like to use only down to 50% or 70% or something of the battery in order to get a long life out of them. So if I wanna do that, I could have it shut off at 12 volts, 11.8 volts. And that way I know that if this ever shuts off, my batteries are low, I just need to wait for the sun to come out tomorrow or hook up my generator and charge them or plug them into the grid and charge them, what have you. So this little panel is just an inexpensive panel that was pre-wired from Amazon. Unfortunately, it was pre-wired wrong. Um, they've got the wiring diagram up there and the wiring di di diagram is right. The pre-wiring was wrong. Anyway, so I've got the power coming into here and this goes to the switch. When you uh, rock the switch down, the little LED comes on. I can see the voltage of the batteries. That's just this uh, the voltage right here. And then I have my cigarette lighter adapter and my five volt charger which does in fact work. I'm not convinced that it's two amps um, for charging, but it is, it does work. I've tried both of those ports, so I can have my phone charging off of that. So this is pretty cool as a simple setup, maybe a starter, maybe you're gonna do this, you're gonna add panels, make it a higher voltage battery pack or whatever, but this gets you your 12 volt accessories. This allows you to, if you wanna plug in a small inverter, you could plug, no. You wouldn't want to do that. You're, rate, you're, you're limited to five amps. Don't be plugging an inverter into here, right? But you could charge your accessories. You could run some, some very small 12 volt accessories off of here. And then you've got a little flip switch to turn it on and off. Anyway, if you try and use more than five amps and this fuse should blow and that should protect the charge controller. And that is my simple 12 volt setup. And it's pretty inexpensive. It's about 150 bucks worth of lead acid batteries, 100 bucks worth of charge controller, 20 bucks or so worth of um, 12 volt outputs. So I've got 16 gauge wire here, which is plenty for my five amp fuse. And then I've got my 10 gauge over to my solar panel. Now the 10 gauge of the solar panel is overkill. That's only eight amps, 10 amps. The solar panel is 10 amps. Um, but what you wanna make sure of, because everything here is very close to each other, you don't have to worry too much about the wire length. When you're going to your solar panel, you need to worry about your wire length. Go look up a chart and find out if I'm using a 10 amp solar panel and that amperage is always going to be the same and I'm running 50 feet you know make sure that you've got the wire length for that you know it might be that you'd be fine with a 14 gauge or a 12 gauge um, I happen to be using 10 gauge and that's overkill because that's good for probably 30 amps at this uh, 15 to 20 feet or so that I've got here um, but something like 14 gauge would probably be just fine um, watch out though because the MC4 connectors when you make that connection onto the wire that's coming in, if the insulation isn't big enough, then it doesn't clamp down and get a good watertight connection. With this 10 gauge wire, you get a really nice watertight connection into the back of the MC4 connector here that you crimped onto there. So I'll, I'll list the crimpers. I've got the, the crimpers and the wire that I use. This is pure copper wire. This is not copper clad aluminum. You'll see that in a lot of Amazon listings. If you start looking at the cheap wire, you'll see the CCA and that's copper clad aluminum. Um, if you've ever messed with copper clad aluminum that has been exposed to the elements, it just, it just falls apart. You know, you try and strip it back and it just crumbles in your hands. You want pure copper. Um, it's, just, it's just better. And that's, that's what I try and buy all the time is pure copper because it just makes sense. Anyway, there is my simple 12 volt setup. No inverter here, but you can certainly do that. If you wanted to run an inverter off of the batteries, just make sure that you use it according to the inverter and the cables running to the inverter off of here. Let me know what you thought, um, what you would do to make this system more customizable to your own uses, because that's the beauty is being able to build something that works for you. Hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see y'all 
on the next one.